Hi everyone, Vigorous Rapscallion here with another quick tutorial video. Uh, as promised, I'm going to be taking a boolean chip and putting it into a system that uses the piston gizmo so we can see what those look like. Uh, this isn't really a game per se, it's more of a module that's going to go into a later game. So I've sort of set up all of our set pieces here ahead of time just so you don't have to watch me do that in the tutorial. We've got a gun with a trigger zone on it on a little pedestal here, looks nice and dramatic. We've got some pistons, they're hooked up to our gun range door. We've got our candles, they've got a little trigger zone on them which is uh, coming out of the back here, so we can use that as a shootable target. If you don't know how to make shootable targets, I went over that in an earlier video. So uh, go ahead and check out the rest of my channel if you want to see a video on that. But you see we've got the same setup on all three of these here, the only difference being that the pistons are at different heights. I did that just as a demonstration, so you can see it doesn't matter where your piston is relative to the object. Imagine that this axis, this horizontal axis coming out of your piston, it's actually coming out of the center of that object for all intents and purposes. So keep that in mind when you're building things. You don't have to have your gizmos right next to the things that are being moved. In fact, it might be convenient if you have a bunch of things attached to the same gizmo to have them very far away. That's not going to be a problem for you. So right now, none of this does anything. All of our set pieces are kind of connected, but nothing's going on. So let's talk about what we want to happen here. Well, I want all three of these doors to come up, and then I want to shoot all three targets. Every time I shoot a target, I want two things to happen. I want to get a point, and I want the door of the target I shot to come back down. Uh, because, you know, if you keep shooting that target, it might cause problems. Maybe the player can just keep up racking on points shooting one. Uh, and then once all three targets have been shot, and only in that case, I want the doors to pop back open, to reset the system. Now, that doesn't sound like much of a game. That's because it's not. It's going to go into a larger setup that's a lot more complicated. That's going to be the next video I'm putting up, which is going to be a sort of sniper training range. I'm really looking forward to making that one, actually. I'm pretty close to done with it. Uh, well, that's coming up, so let's see what sort of chips we need for this setup. All right, so let's start getting some chips in front of us. Uh, let's start with a variable chip. We almost always need one. We know we've got some pistons back there, so they're going to need inputs for their velocity. We're also going to need to turn them on, so uh, this should do for now. Let's go ahead and get all the values we're going to need for that. So on or off is going to be 1 or 0, so let's put a 1 in there. Uh, let's go ahead, and I liked 40 before. That seemed like a good speed. Let's stick with that. Let's input positive 40 for one of these values, not 400, not 4, but 40. Uh, and then let's go ahead and input negative 40 for the other. Oh, nope. I really do love this keyboard. It's totally the best. It's so freaking good. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now that's all sort of set up. Now we know we've got three pistons, so we've and we've got three targets. Let's start out with three combinators to sort of keep track of what's going on with those guys. Get those nice and in front of us. Now, when the game starts, we want those doors to go up, but then when each one of those targets is struck, we want the doors to come back down. Uh, so we're going to sort of need to compare a value for that, and the compare chip probably sounds like the best option. Let's get that in front of us. So we're going to need three, because this is kind of an array of three different possibilities here. Three different targets. And we're going to want to put these in advanced mode, because we're going to want to access uh, that else and if case, the advanced version of that. So let's put these all in advanced mode. Now we've got our custom else if cases. Uh, that's my favorite way so far to switch these pistons, because you can make, as you'll see... And there's a lot of different ways to do it, but this one's my favorite so far. Um, so you can just go ahead and make one of these cases. In this case, we're going to make the else 40. We're going to make the if negative 40. And that's because the else case is going to be our initialized state where the doors are going up. Uh, the, if ca or the if case is going to be if this is greater than or equal to 1. And that's when we want the doors to go back down. So let's start just with all of that. Get that all hooked up. Looks nice. Uh, we want these to hold a value, not just pulse it, so we're going to loop them all back. And what's triggering these? Well, our targets are triggering these, so we're going to want to go and get those.
Nice. So now it looks like we're going to get a value added to these each time one of them is shot. But we want to be getting our, uh, our if case. We want those doors to go back down if it's greater than or equal to 1. So first let's go ahead and get our greater than or equal to over here. Get that for all of them. And we've already got a 1 because we're going to be using that to uh, turn our system on in the beginning. So... Let's go ahead and connect that one up. So that's going to be our green node here. That's what we're comparing against. And as long as it's greater than or equal to 1, we should be getting our, I our uh, if case, which is negative 40, and the doors should come back down. Okay, so I like to use a combinator to hold these values here. Got a positive and negative value, forgot to turn snap on again. Let's go get those in a nice array in front of us. And what's nice about this is if one of these is not in its on state, it's just going to output a zero. So we can actually take both values, put them into our combinator, take the value from that combinator, and connect it to its corresponding piston. Let's get those all hooked up. I like to do uh, green to blue. I know it's not the best color coding, but it just looks more symmetrical. Doesn't, doesn't that look nice? All right, so we're going to have to hook these up to their corresponding piston. What do we want to happen? Well, we want it to be going up when the values uh, zero or not equal to 1 or less than 1. We want it going down in the other case. But we want something else to happen. Uh, we want this whole system to reset once you've struck every target once. So we're going to use a Boolean to check on that. As promised, there's our nice AND gate in front of us. I don't know why my hand keeps glitching out. I want that further in front of me. There we go. So uh, this is going to deal with these over here. If any of these have a non-zero integer, this treats it as a true state. So we can just go ahead and hook up the output from our targets, from our target combinator, I should say. And now, if and only if all three targets have been struck, something's going to happen. What do we want to happen? Well, when that happens, when our true state is activated, we want all of these to reset to zero. And you can just make a chain of resets like this. This is going to cause all three of those to reset when that AND gate is triggered. Our pistons aren't moving right now because we haven't turned the game on. Let's see how to do that real quick. So I thought a nice dramatic way to activate this game, especially if, you know, the, um, the player isn't able to see the trigger zones or any of this stuff. It'd be nice if the game just started right when you grabbed the gun. I think that'd have a nice feel to it. So I've got a little trigger zone that's going to detect the gun. It's currently in there. So there's our when leaving uh, trigger. That's the one we're probably going to want to deal with. And we're going to want to turn all of these pistons on and keep them in their on state after this gun has picked up. So we're probably going to need a combinator holding a value to do that. Back a tiny bit. And now forward a tiny bit. Here we go. Let's grab ourselves a combinator. Pull that up right there. And connect it up. So we want to loop this back to hold the value. Grab that. Oh yeah, and this is handy. You connect, can connect stuff like this from either way, so you know you could bring it back. If you end up having to go back and forth connecting a bunch of stuff up, that's useful. Um, yeah, we're still on the connect tool. So now whenever this is above 1, the piston should be on. The pistons, like all the other uh, binary logic gates, treat any non-zero integer as a uh, on state, as a true state. Let's get these all hooked up. You'll notice nothing's happening yet because I haven't moved that gun. All right. Here we go. Moment of truth. Let's see if the first thing we need to happen happens. Oh, uh, look at that. That's excellent. Okay, it looks like all three of our candles are now visible. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens when I shoot one. Oh, look. Our door comes right back down. It seems to come down before the candle respawns. That's good because the player can't just keep on hitting the same candle. Let's see what happens when we hit all three. Huh. Well, that was kind of annoying. I mean, yeah, it did reset, but that one didn't come all the way down. That looks pretty janky. I don't like that. So uh, I want to deal with that next. How are we going to fix that problem? Okay, so we want some sort of delay in between this resetting the system so that that door has time to come all the way down. 
before the system resets. We're probably going to want to use a delay chip for that. Let's get one in front of us. And our variable off to the side there is already completely full. So let's get another one of those in front of us to deal with the delay chip here. And about how long do we want this to be? Well, our, my doors here are 70 centimeters. These pistons move at 40 centimeters per second. So that seems pretty simple. 1.8 seconds should do it just perfectly. And that should bring our door all the way down before the system resets. Let's set it up and see if it works. Okay. So, now remember this is tenths of a second. So I'm going to be inputting 18. And that should give us a delay of, uh, of 1.8 seconds. Let's hook it up. And now we're actually going to have to grab this from over here. Hook that up to our delay. And then we're going to take the output from our delay timer. And uh, we're going to go ahead and hook that up to our reset chain that we set up earlier. Let's see if that works. Okay. That one goes back down, back down, and great. Ah, worked like a charm. So as soon as that got all the way to the bottom, it went ahead and shot right back up. Uh, right now we're not keeping track of score at all, so let's set that up next. So last thing we need to set up is our master scorekeeper. So we've got these three inputs here. We needed to increment by one each one time one of the, those targets back there is struck. Uh, we're going to use a combinator as usual to do that. And we're going to loop that value back. Now we ran, run into our first problem here because we have three signals coming in. And uh, we've already taken up one of those nodes. So we could use another combinator to conflate those signals. But these signals are going to be coming out constantly from here. So that's going to cause that runaway score problem that we usually fix with a delay timer. Let's go ahead and get, or delay chip, sorry. Let's go ahead and get those in front of us. One, two, three for our three different signals. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I conflate the signal before? Wouldn't that give us uh, less delay chips? Uh, there are still some problems with the way this is set up. I was getting a runaway value. So um, I ended up just moving the delay chip back in the system. And I've used that to fix uh, glitches on like seven different occasions. So if you're getting a runaway value and it doesn't make sense, Try moving your delay chips closer to the value you want them to be dealing with, and that usually seems to clear that problem right up. So that's why I have it set up that way. Let's go ahead and grab our combinator and put it in front of us. I'm going to take all three of these signals. We want to conflate them. So now anytime this pulses once, this will go up by one, and we should have a perfectly functional scorekeeper. Let's hook it up. Put that in our field of view, get rid of that, start the game. I tried to demonstrate it there, but I'm too bad of a shot. If you hit one of the candles before those go all the way up, it will uh, you know, start going down as soon as it's struck. I'll show that in just a second. There you go. I just wanted to demonstrate that. You can see we've hit four targets, and we've got four points. That seems to be working just perfectly. Uh, this whole system seems to work. Not much of a game. Like I said, it's going to go into a bigger thing. And I'd like to add a little bit of polish to it, though. It's pretty bland. Uh, the doors do that thing where they just go up and down. Uh, if you don't care about adding polish to your games, you know, no worries. Uh, thanks for watching up to this point. But if you do, uh, let's go ahead and deal with that next. So I went ahead and reset the game, and we're going to add a few little pieces of polish to it that's going to make it, you know, a little more fun for the player. Uh, I like sound effects. It'd be kind of nice if we had something to set um, the game initializing apart from when the doors just come up while you're playing. So let's use a sound effect chip to do that. I haven't gone over these, and I don't know if I will. They're, they're pretty self-explanatory. Just if you get an input into them, they play a sound effect. Now, we don't want this sound effect to play every single time. Uh, we want it to only play once the first time this leaves the trigger zone, because if you move that gun through it again, or if the player moves through that zone and moves the gun off the pedestal or something like that, it's going to play the sound effect again. That's going to be super annoying. So we only want that to happen once in the case that this right here, the number of times that that uh, object left zone has been triggered is exactly equal to one not greater than or equal to or it's going to re-trigger each time so let's grab our one from up here use that again let's grab 
our input from here, and then we're going to have our if case, if red equals green, activate our sound effect chip. Great, and uh, what sound effect do we want? We're going to go into settings. It gives you a whole bunch of them. I like uh, the boot up noise for a game. Where is it? There it is. And that kind of... That works nicely. It sounds like some doors coming up or, you know, some sort of giant robot or something. But anyways, let's see if it actually triggers when I pick up the gun. Great. That does feel kind of nice. Okay, and I dealt with this a little in part one, but let's go ahead and tweak these, uh, these piston gizmos a little. Let's uh, make them a little smoother when they go up, and once we do that, it's going to change the amount of time they take to go up. So we're going to have to deal with that so that our door still goes up and down smoothly uh, when it resets. First, let's make it just a pretty short acceleration time. Let's make it take like half a second, and uh, hopefully that'll make these take like about two seconds total to, uh, to move from one state to the other. Let's find out. Yeah, that does look a little smoother. And on the third one, let's see if it's messed up our reset there. It has a little bit, just a tiny bit. It looks like another tenth of a second should be enough to fix it. So there's our variable right underneath our delay chip back there. Let's put it up by one more tenth of a second. Try that again. Last one. And one more. So it looks like what I initially said did end up being what happened. Uh, it looks like these are taking exactly two seconds to come back down, or pretty close to it, close enough that I can't really perceive the difference. Yep, as soon as it hits the bottom, seems to spring back up. So you can do, you know, little tiny things like that just to make your game a little bit interesting, add a few sound effects. Uh, but yeah, I hope that this has really helped you guys work with the piston gizmos and get them into your own games. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.